Namaskar. Welcome to Candid Conversation. Well, the government has launched several schemes to unearth black money, and the latest of these is the income disclosure scheme, which uh, income declaration scheme, where the government has given a window of four months from June 1st to September 30th for, for people to declare their undisclosed income in, uh, during this window and pay a simple tax of 45% on it, which includes a penalty of 7.5%, 30% tax, and 7.5% towards Krishi Kalyan Sess. And to discuss uh, about this entire scheme and black money and the initiatives that the government is taking to unearth and deal with this issue, we have with us in the studio none other than the Revenue Secretary, Ministry of Finance, Government of India, Dr. Hasmuk Adia. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us. Now, three explanatory uh, circulars have been issued, FAQs. Have people warmed up to the scheme after one month, sir? Uh, well, I would think so. Uh, in the first few days, about first 15 days, there were a lot of queries people had in their mind. And subsequent to that, uh, we made clarifications in three different tranches. So now we have put into the public space uh, replies to about 36 questions which mm -hmm. people have in their mind. And uh, after that, we have also done about uh, 300 meetings all over the country. Our income tax officers have gone around and met uh, people in various groups, done town hall meetings. And the response that we see now is very, very enthusiastic. Good, sir. So there is this project insight also, which, you know, is data mining that the department is doing. And in this day and age, we have information about everything, all sorts of transactions, whether it's property, stock exchanges. Uh, you know, the government is tracking everything. Uh, so it's probably not possible, I mean, when the department is keeping track of everything for people to get out of the net, isn't it, sir? Well, it will be so very soon because, uh, of course, we already have an existing capability of uh, the department by which uh, we have issued several notices so far. For example, uh, last year uh, uh, we uh, issued about, last two years we issued about one crore such notices to people whose information was available with us in some form. And uh, subsequent to that, uh, 90 lakh people filed their returns. Okay. And we got about 10,000 crore of taxation, taxes out of that. So this is already very successful. Plus the usual work of survey, which our department does, based on definite information, that also has yielded us good result. In the 9,500 surveys we have done in the last two years, we could uh, get undisclosed income of about 22,000 crore. And apart from 900 searches which were done, the raids which were made by income tax department, in which also we got about 21,000 crore. So kul milake in the domestic uh, uh, black money, we have been able to get about 43,000 crore in the last two years. So this is a one-time window, but uh, government says there is going to be no scrutiny here. Uh, you know, you've, uh, does that mean that a person has to declare the source of income? Because there has to be some concern about this because, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's going to be no scrutiny, do you have to declare the source? Well, we have already said so in the uh, third uh, tranche of uh, question answer. We have said that we are not asking for any source whatsoever. You are free to uh, is the undisclosed income with you. And no further scrutiny will be done of this. So you decide how much is the quantum you want to declare, 10 crore, 100 crore, 1,000 crore, and then we will ask no questions about the source. Then also there's confidentiality, section 138, which also applies here and details will not be disclosed to any law enforcement agencies. Could you just, you know, explain this? Yeah, actually under 138, there is a general confidentiality which we give to the people. That says that we will not share this detail with anybody in public. But with the law enforcement agency, there is a provision we can share. But for the purpose of this scheme, we have made it very, very clear. We have issued a notification under 138.2 where we are saying ki this information we are not going to share with anyone whatsoever, not even with law enforcement agency. So this information will not go to even the other wing of revenue department, CBEC. Okay. It will not go to any other law enforcement agency. It will not go to ED, enforcement director. It will not go to CBI, none. It, we will not share this information with anyone. But, uh, you know, there seems to be sufficient safeguards uh, where income obtained from criminal sources let's say even corruption, smuggling, etc. That's not supposed to be, you're not allowed to declare it under the scheme. But there seem to be safeguards here that, you know, people can declare that income. Do they have immunity, sir? 
they do not have the immunity. We have made it very, very clear that simply by declaring any income under the undisclosed uh, scheme, under the income de declaration scheme, one will not get any immunity from criminal offence at all. Now, since we are not asking for any source, it is possible that some, some of this income may get declared, but that does not mean that any immunity will be available to them from the uh, prosecution, which is otherwise uh, available under say prevention of corruption act or under the criminal act of uh, any other uh, type you know right so, so i mean cbi and all these other agencies you will not be giving information to them but they will on their own perhaps uh, be able to obtain and uh, you know scr scrutinize and uh, follow these cases absolutely yeah if there is a case going on against somebody he cannot take this as an excuse to exempt him he cannot say that because i have declared this money you please exempt me no way there is no immunity available under those acts uh, you know, we live in the age of Google, and when we Google uh, black money in India, you'll get so many articles about all about where, how the money is generated, where it goes, how it becomes white, I mean, round tripping, uh, you know, various shell companies, etc. Now, people who are benefiting from such a system, which seems to be a well-oiled system, why should they in come back into, this, into the system and, you know, declare their income right now? Well, there are a lot of reasons for this. One is that the way the international pressure is building up on the countries which are considered as tax haven, and those countries are made to comply with the international best practices now. And so it may not be possible anymore for people to hide their income abroad in form of some uh, investment in some company out there. So that is one. The second thing is that domestically also we have got a lot of things which are going to be tighter now. Okay. For example, we have got the compulsory PAN reporting requirement for all, all transactions. Now, if somebody has got black money, where will he use? He will use it for some transaction. He will use it for either buying a car or whatever, going abroad or whatever. Now, those transactions will have to, uh, they, they will have to show their PAN along with those transactions. So, it will be increasingly difficult for people to use black money anywhere. And so, it makes third thing is that uh, even the dummy companies, the uh, Khoka companies, we are coming down heavily on them. Okay. And we have unearthed a very big scandal of such uh, dummy companies, which were sort of uh, giving entries to people, you know, in order to hide their black income, or they were trying to convert black into white. There was right. also a scam of uh, long-term capital gain uh, okay. uh, benefit being given. Uh, that was being misused by some company for converting penny stock into a capital gain, huge capital gain, and right. then uh, making uh, black money into white. So the government and the SIT particularly, the special investigation team under Justice Shah and uh, Ajit yes. Pasayat, they have also gone into all these cases. They have been discussing with the department, and we are coming down heavily on all this methodology of uh, black money. So there is another side to uh, the black money debate, which is that, uh, you know, it has to be cleaned up from the tax department side also because uh, it, some of these articles very clearly mention that, you know, tax consultants, income tax officials, everything, they are part of the system. That's what's, I mean, it's not an individual who is able to do all this on his own. So what is the government doing to clean up the department from there, from your side? Well, the first thing is that the government has given a very strict message to the bureaucracy also that the government wants clean behavior by all our officers. We are not going to brook any kind of corruption whatsoever in the revenue department. And also, in order to show our commitment to accountability of officers, we have also taken strict action against officers. In the past two years itself, about 70 people, staff and the officers of revenue uh, department, means uh, both excise, custom and income tax, all of them. So 70 people have been removed after due inquiry. They have been dismissed. And there are other 35 which have been removed simply under the provision where it says that if, uh, if a person is not suitable for the job, the government can remove him. So simply by giving a three-month notice, we have been able to remove 35 people. Those people who had uh, some kind of a background, their integrity was probably doubtful, or they were inefficient, sure. or whatever was the background. So that also we have done. So, see, so there are different parts of India. Now, there are, we live in the e-filing era, and I'm sure most people file their taxes and returns by e-filing. But there are another segment which, you know, deal only in cash. They don't even have PAN cards. You know, they've moved up the value chain by just starting their businesses through cash, moving up, you know, and then they re resort to keeping their cash aside. Uh, 
how does one deal with this kind of scenario because it's a reality isn't it well it's it's a fact of life but we need to really contain the cash economy the sit has been working on this and uh, uh, they have given several suggestions for this to government and the government is uh, thinking about it so we need to uh, sort of uh, one of the suggestions they have made is to put a limit on the stock in the cash holding with any individual that they, anybody cannot keep more than this much cash that is one suggestion the second is that uh, some transactions beyond a particular limit could be made illegal if it is made in cash so mm -hmm. that is another way of uh, dealing with it but the government has already taken an action that in case of any transaction in cash of uh, say more than 2 lakh rupees we would be uh, taking a tax collected at source so that will mean that we will create a audit trail for that cash uh, transaction which has taken place and we would be able to pin down people and combined with other requirement that we already put i'm sure that it'll be increasingly difficult for people to do anything in cash even the gst the idea of gst once gst comes it is going to be a auto enforcement mechanism okay in which anybody who is not going to issue a voucher and is going to sort of uh, do trading in uh, cash he, he will find it very difficult nobody will accept his goods because the people who will buy will not get the input tax credit in respect of those goods okay it is a chain of input tax credit based on with the gst functions and so even the gst itself will help us in containing the black money so i mean some of the articles that i read seem to suggest that there are people who you know who deal with cash who don't even have pan cards so i mean they are not in the tax system at all there's no way you can even keep track of them how will you deal with something like this well that's what we are trying to do that if they don't have the pan card they won't be able to transact anything beyond uh, a particular limit and there are separate limits you know 2 lakh rupees of course is for any transaction but for different things for example hotel bills there is a limit 25000 rupees if anybody wants to pay a hotel bill more than 25000 they have to show their pan card okay. in cash so we are making it increasingly difficult for people to dispose of the black income in form of any transaction another segment that uh, is suggested where black money goes to is in these uh, societies trusts uh, charitable institutions ngos etc to what extent you know is a keen eye being watched and kept on these on these institutions it's very unfortunate but these are the institutions which have also become source of black money and i think the society also needs to come down heavily on such institutions they generate a lot of black money in form of capitation fees or in form of taking out uh, income out of the trust they charge hefty fees and then they take out some money out of it and the owner or the trustee they use it recently in south india you must have also come to know that the one of the biggest raid in which we found 80 crore of cash seizure one of the largest cash seizure we found was in respect of uh, one of such uh, trustees of an uh, educational institution right so then the government is obviously following up on this uh let's come back to the income disclosure scheme so there you can declare also apart from cash you declare your assets in the form of land building gold art etc jewelry now what happens is when the appreciation especially in land and building for instance is so high that a person if he has to declare now at today's at rates on january 1st 2016 you know if a property of 1 lakh has reached 1 crore uh, the person does not have the means to pay the 45% what do you do then well general presumption would be that if a person has got some undisclosed income it would not only be in form of property he may also have some other undisclosed cash also with him but if it is not so then also he has an option of disposing part of the asset if he can but still if he cannot dispose of part of the asset also then he may have to make some temporary arrangement of borrowing from somebody to pay the tax there is a strong demand made by people that in such cases where only one property is being declared and no other cash or any other disclosure is being made it would be useful to give them some time so that they can look for a good client they they don't have to do any st sale in the market uh, distress sale or something like that so there is a suggestion which has come to us that for such people maybe the government can think of uh, extending the time limit for payment okay. but i would like to make it very very clear that as far as the original window is concerned we are not going to extend the scheme beyond 30th of september that okay. is very clear but about the payment for which we have given another 2 months there is a demand that for such cases which you mentioned there must be a longer time period available to them okay uh 
increasing the tax net, widening the tax net. So, so far, what do we have? We have only about five plus crore uh, taxpayers in a country of our size, though, of course, it has significantly increased after Modi government came to power. Uh, even, uh, you know, I mean, in, in this day and age, how do we increase the tax base? One of the methods is uh, TDS, isn't it, sir? TDS has been very successful because people have to file their returns to get the benefit of the tax. Yes, TDS is very successful, and uh, we are also following up TDS route. So there are several people who have their TDS deducted, but they don't come forward to file their return. And we very politely remind them that, look here, there is some credit of yours lying with us. Would you like to kindly file a return and take the refund? So it is possible that some of them, some of them may realize then that TDS was deducted at the rate of only 10 percent, but actual liability that I have is at the rate of 30 percent. So they may like to pay extra money also. So this is one way that we are uh, trying to expand the uh, tax net. So we, uh, we, in this particular scheme, it's a simple scheme. You declare the money and you pay 45 percent. 7.5 percent is the penalty, which is a reasonable penalty. But that seven, uh, other 7.5 percent is goes towards the Krishi Kalyan cess. Uh, what exactly is this? Well, the idea was that uh, our country needs a lot of resources because agriculture productivity is an issue. Most of the people are dependent on agriculture for their livelihood. Now, if you have to improve the state of affairs of agriculture, give them more water, more fertilizer, better seeds, then naturally the government needs some money to make schemes for them. So we thought that if we connect uh, the income declaration scheme with something for the welfare of farmer, a lot of people will emotionally ident identify themselves with this cause, and they might come forward to also contribute toward that. So whatever contribution the people in the IDS will be giving, 7.5 percent out of 45 percent will go to the welfare of farmers. Sure. Some of the, one of the avenues where black money also goes in is into uh, claimed agricultural income because uh, there's some Benami uh, who is put as an agriculturist. Maybe those people would also think twice now, I mean, uh, perhaps, you know, because after all, uh, they are de de denying, you know, uh, agriculture a chance of developing in the country. Absolutely, yeah, because some people do try to hide uh, their other income under the garb of agriculture because they have got some agriculture land also. But this one also, we are making it increasingly difficult for people to do. And we have been watching figures. The figures of people who are declaring other income, uh, uh, ki, along with other income, agriculture income, that is coming down for the last two years because of the strictness that the government is having. So those figures we are watching, and it's not an alarming figure now. It's about 10 to 15,000 crore of extra income with their declaring the name of agriculture. Uh, they've got other income, and then they are declaring uh, extra income of uh, agriculture. Now, we live in, a, uh, in an era where the, you know, it's a young population, our country, and it's a digital age, and most people are you know, into e-money and uh, mobile. Everything is on their smartphones. So uh, obviously, in an era like this, uh, it's easy to track, and uh, probably more people will be compliant, at least in the next generation. Is, is that what you see? One must uh, say to the credit of the young generation that they simply don't like the idea of black money. They all like the idea of uh, using credit cards or their uh, pay wallets in the mobile phones. And uh, also, generally, emotionally, they don't identify with such uh, activities of black money, etc. So I think this is a good sign for the future in our country. And we do hope that uh, the future generation, which is now growing, they will, uh, they will not have any issue of cash uh, economy being there, you know. Sure. So the, the earlier scheme for foreign uh, disclosure, uh, you know, I mean, we do have now what we have a tax information network, which is with we've signed uh, uh, agreements for information sharing with most of the so-called tax havens. Uh, how successful was that scheme in the first place? Well, I wouldn't be able to uh, decide the success or failure of the scheme because we never had any target for the scheme. It was an honest uh, opportunity given to people to come clean by the government. And those who wanted to avail of that opportunity did so. We got about declarations of 4,100 crore, and out of which 60% came to us by way of a taxation. The money has already come in that. Now the question is, what happens to people who did not disclose money in the right. Foreign uh, Black Money Act? As you know, already we are 
coming down heavily on those people who were caught in the HSBC bank accounts right. or in the ICIJ's first disclosure in nine, uh, 2013. So we have just put out these figures uh, last week. Uh, in case of HSBC, we have found 8,000 crore of undisclosed uh, income, which is which was lying in the foreign bank accounts of Indians. And in case of ICIG, about 5,000 crore. So 13,000 crore of black money has been already detected by us since then. Now the question is, they will all have to pay 120%. Sure. The total amount is 120% uh, under the Black Money Act. Now this is the kind of fate. And plus, in case of HSBC also, about 164 people have been prosecuted. And they will face criminal action also. They will go to jail. And in case of ICIJ also, 53 people have been prosecuted. So they will all have to face the music now. And in addition, now the way the countries are coming together, even Switzerland for that matter, you must have seen the recent report in which it says that this is the figure uh, declared by the Swiss National Bank, where it says that the amount of deposits of Indians has gone down by 33% okay. in Switzerland. Okay. It is now only about 8,000 crore, something right. like 8,000 crore. Now, what does it indicate? That people are now not comfortable even keeping in uh, tax sure. havens, you know. And Switzerland, we have had an agreement. We are going to start automatic exchange of information from 2018. Sure. So most of these uh, havens have, you know, survived because of their confidentiality. Now, we are living in an era of transparency. And even with tax information, do you see, foresee the next, I mean, in the next generation that everything will be more transparent? People, you know, this Section 138 actually may be, you know, misused to some extent, but uh, could it be, you know, that we are going to be in an era of transparency? We would think so, because it's going to be an era of transparency. Even internationally, there's a movement for uh, all the multinationals which are uh, sort of trying to uh, pay tax nowhere in no jurisdiction. It is a case of double non-taxation. So there is a double tax avoidance agreement, but as against that, most of the multinationals use the route of double non-taxation. So internationally also, all the countries are coming down heavily on this, and they are trying to sort of plug this. So besides uh, your uh, occupation uh, as a civil servant, senior civil servant, you are also uh, an expert on yoga. That's your PhD is in yoga and Vedanta. Uh, if we try and link, you know, there's big, the big issue, people presume that yoga can deal with stress in all forms. But, you know, there's stress related to black money. Uh, can uh, yoga deal with that? Well, certainly uh, the quality of mind is what uh, yoga decides, you know. If you are into yoga, then your quality of mind is different. But then for people to get a better quality of mind through yoga, for doing meditation, what you need is a clean slate. And unless uh, uh, you have, uh, and if you have got some X, X like this, suppose if you have got some hidden black money hidden somewhere, then I'm sure uh, there won't be that focus in the meditation. Sure. And nobody would be able to get the peace of mind, you know. So definitely there is a connection with, uh, so even for people to do better yoga, I would suggest, uh, one uh, uh, knowledgeable person, uh, spiritual uh, person was saying that if you want to do uh, meditation of good quality for one hour, you need to uh, do your act properly for the remaining 23 hours. Sure. How you live your life for remaining 23 hours, that decides the quality of one hour of medita meditation. So, so finally, sir, in that realm, in the spiritual realm, uh, we can ask sir, the moral question about this, this particular scheme because some people say, you know, I mean, I've been so honest through my life. What am I getting out of this? You know, you're just helping all the crooks to get away. Uh, what would you say to them? I mean, uh, is this, there is a probably a greater good perhaps in bringing those who are on the wrong path back into the right path. Well, this must have been the complaint uh, in 97 when the scheme had come, where people, uh, the government had said, could just pay 30%, which is, and that also on the mark, not on the current market valuation, on the date sure. of acquisition. Now, that was something where all the uh, honest taxpayers felt cheated. They went to Supreme Court also, and Supreme Court also observed that, how can you do this? This time it is not so. The honest taxpayer is paying 30%, while others are paying 45%. So it's a higher rate, number one. Number two, we are saying that, okay, mistake ho jata hai sabse. It is possible that you have committed a mistake. This is one-time opportunity. After that, no more. Then we will see to it that the law takes its own course. Uh, do you have any estimates, sir, as to how much money will come in through the scheme? 
We do not have any estimates and nor do we want to make any estimate. It is an opportunity given to people. If people want to come forward and declare it, it is fine, you know. Otherwise, it is not even a part of revenue targets for me this year. So, we have not set any target for this scheme. Whatever, matlab, we will make a genuine attempt to reach out to people who have got black money. And if they want to declare, it is fine. Dr. Hasmuth Adia, thank you very much, sir, for talking to us here on Candid Conversation and clarifying all these issues with regard to the income disclosure scheme. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, uh, that was uh, Dr. Hasmuk Adia telling us all about uh, the government's initiatives in terms of black money, as well as this important scheme, which is open till the 30th of September. It's a one-time compliance window. One month has already passed. The government has issued various circulars and clarifications regarding the scheme, and the government is hopeful that uh, people with undisclosed income will just come forward and utilize this one-time opportunity. Thank you very much for watching. Namaskar. Thank you.